quickly yen kwa homa nsuna yendi enkomo kakra na yeni ya security aspect ni enkomo ni engine thought mr uh, Emmanuel kutin uh, yenje ni thought on a ye enwa di eko so ewo hanu misi eni uh, what may be happening in a ye uh, mali and uh, mr kutin good morning Sammy, good morning for having me and good morning to your cherished listeners and viewers. Um, I trust you're doing well. Oh, by God's grace. Let me take your initial comments on the intervention by ECOWAS on the situation in Mali. What's your take on it? Well, we have to commend our, our, our president for the swift response. In fact, uh, the extraordinary summit they convened yesterday was a step in the right direction. But I think that we can continue to do the same things and expecting different results. That's my initial comment on this matter. All right. Now, I would want for us to understand from the security point of view, you know, how uh, transitions are supposed to be ongoing and then the sudden U-turn uh, in Mali by the uh, military junta uh, to take over again. What, 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 what brings about these things? If you recall somewhere last year, I think September, where the mediation effort took place here in Accra, I think it happened at Pidiasi Lodge. There was a transitional charter and if you read through the charter, I think along the line, it was not properly followed. And that is why we had a relapse in what we have in Mali today. More often than not, the um, special envoy to mediate in the crisis of this nature, and it's no mean a person than a former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, like Jonathan. What is missing and some of us are watching from afar we cannot understand is for a reshuffle of that magnitude should happen and the mediator is not involved or was not even informed because if you look at the transition act apart from putting the transition government in place which was supposed to happen in eight years the the mediator was supposed to still continue the diplomacy behind the scenes. Mm. So for a decision like a reshuffle to happen, the major changes have taken place without the consent of the military junta, who was then the vice president, I guess. At least might to be desired. So it creates the undesirability in the mentality of African leaders. Because as a transition government, you are just a, a, a caretaker government. And everything you do, you must be mindful of the stakeholders. And if you look at Mali in particular, it has a special case. And the world has interest in Mali because of the Sahel Belt vis-a-vis the fight against terrorism. And if you look at Mali, um, apart from the economic challenges they are facing as a result of COVID, you, you also have the Tariq rebels to confront with. So the mission of these things uh, I would have taught proper and patient democracy, uh, diplomacy should have been invoked. But unfortunately, we took things for granted. I think after four or five months of the transition, we felt that everything was okay but you know in africa i don't think the ingredients of democracy is in play democracy is not just the matter of going to elections and electing leaders the uh, the ingredients of proper democracy is the rule of law respect for human rights where ordinary citizens are guaranteed their rights and apart from that, you look at the economic dimension of it. Look, as citizens, what is the responsibility of the state to me and you? To make sure the opportunities that are due me and you will duly get it. But if you look at the ECOWAS sub-region, I, I beg to differ that we have not entrenched democracy to that level. We get leaders who, after their two terms, they change the constitution and go for a third term. 
and ECOWAS is silent about it. Mm. So m many people or many leaders feel they can also do the same. If you recall Togo, if you recall the skirmishes in Benin. So to me, ECOWAS doesn't have the teeth to actually bite. If you even look at the current situation, we find ourselves this have recovered. The economic muzzle of ECOWAS to really exert some kind of pressure on a country to change a course is not there, unless it's coming from the country's colonial masters. And you understand that these colonial masters have their vested interest. For all you know, they'll come in a disgusted manner. They want the best for the country. But they, they have their own hidden agenda. And outside ECOWAS, we can use Libya as an example. You know when the Western world were coming for Gaddafi, they labeled him a dictator, a human rights abuser, and what have you. They got Gaddafi out. What is the state of Libya today? Mm. So Africa as a whole, there's a leadership vacuum. And we have to start thinking not about this present generation, but the generation ahead. If you look at the Western world, anything they do, they don't do in terms of their own generation. They think about even generations unborn. Now, let's come to ECOWAS. Mm. What is the economic model of ECOWAS? Do we really trade among ourselves? No. The ECOWAS currency, we said we are bringing, we have changed time and time in no more again. So until we are able to trade with ourselves, that is only when ECOWAS as a block can exert an economic uh, influence on a country to change a particular course. But you know, uh, uh, in my initial statement, I mentioned that we cannot continue to do the same things all the time and expecting different results. Why do I say that? Do we have a mechanism in place by way of intelligence sharing in the security arena? Say so that ECOWAS can even foresee some of these things happening and proactively go into action. No. We wait when it happens. We organize extraordinary conferences like we are, uh, something like we did, and issue a communique. Whether that will actually translate into real action is another matter. Now, there is a point that uh, I have had a couple of people make, which has to do with the integration of uh, the soldiers in the entire transition process, and that they should not have been there in the first place, especially occupying very sensitive positions as defense minister and vice president. Is that where the problem started from? I don't think so. Mm. If, if you, um, you must uh, uh, be in the shoes of Malians prior the military takeover, there were demonstrations upon demonstrations by citizens against the government that was in power. That is when ECOWAS should have stepped in, getting the government to realize that the power does not belong to the leaders. What is democracy? It's not government of the people by the people and for the people. Mm. But ECOWAS turned a blind eye onto such demonstrations until the unexpected happened. And you realize that when the military took over, there were jubilations across the, trace, uh, 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 the, 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 the entire country. They were happy that at least uh, 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 they have been able to use force to cause that change. Now, in any dispensation, especially in Africa, that our institutions are not working, our democracy is still at its infant stages because we reduce the, the, the democracy merely to election of leaders. There was no way you could get the military junta, uh, junta to step aside for a transitional government. That wasn't going to happen. But what should have really happened is the monitoring mechanism they put in place should have been up and doing. And I think along the last the five or six months, they went to sleep. Oh. For Christ's sake, if I am coming in as a caretaker government, 
I don't have the power to do certain changes without recourse to what? The stakeholders. When the reshuffle happened in Mali, the transitional government, did they inform the mechanism ECOWAS put in place to forestall peace and subsequent elections after 18 months? No. So after that aspect, there's no way we, we, we could have been able to do away with the military uh, junta. And don't oh. forget, because of the security challenges in Mali, the military was enormous power than the, even the civilian uh, 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 leader we had at the time. Because if you look at Mali today, look at the UN forces that are there the colonial forces that are there, and even the African forces, just in the name of fighting terrorism. And connect Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso. Why is, uh, do we have some of these rebels uh, uh, trying to take over from government? Because of leadership in these countries. All right, let me, let me ask my final question, Mr. Kuti, before we end the conversation, which has to do with the actions and decisions arrived at. One of them being the fact that uh, the military junta is being told to release the former uh, president and prime minister uh, who, le who are, were part of the transition uh, and under house arrest immediately. Also, uh, they are calling for the uh, you know, appointment of a new civilian prime minister or to be nominated immediately. Now, some of these uh, decisions that were arrived at, do you think that uh, the military would likely uh, abide by or adhere to these decisions? You see, in any warfare, and given that the, the, the military is in charge in Mali now, they have to have a bargaining chip. What is their bargaining chip? Their bargaining chip is holding the president and the prime minister under house arrest. That is the only way they can get the opportunity to make their case. And just issuing a communique goes be uh, issuing a, a communique is not the problem. Uh, it's not the solution. It goes beyond that. You have to have underground diplomacy. There are a lot of things that happen behind the scenes. So yes, they will release them eventually when there's a round table discussion or there's an opportunity for the military to sit down with the ECOWAS mediation team. You realize that unlike the other time when the military junta was invited to Accra, this time they didn't invite him. You may not even understand. Maybe uh, an invitation was extended to him, and he gave conditions. And ECOWAS was not in a position to meet such conditions. So they have to use, uh, 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 in the public eye, they have to show some kind of force they are in charge. But the honest truth is that ECOWAS has not got any teeth to buy it. From the economic point of view, nothing. From the security point of view, nothing. Politically, nothing. So at the end of the day, it is diplomacy, mediation. And you realize His Excellency, the President charged uh, uh, the former President of the Republic of Nigeria to go in immediately and start talking to the stakeholders. Those are the diplomacy I'm talking about. And it will be a give and take affair. And whether we like it or not, we cannot do entirely away with the military junta in this uh, in this case because of the peculiarity of Malian situation, terrorism, the rebels, the economic pressure, and you can imagine the heat COVID-19 has brought on African economies. Mm. Mr. Kutin, we are grateful you made time to speak to us this morning. I'm also honored for the opportunity to interact with your viewers. Thank you. And that's uh, Mr. Emmanuel Kutin, who is a security expert, sharing his thoughts with us on the development in uh, Mali and the actions taken by ECOWAS as they sat uh, to brood over the deplorable situation in Mali.